Dirk's calling from New York. Dirk's pronouns they, them. Dirk wants to talk about the impossibility of there being no God. So, hey, Dirk, you're on with John. Hey, how you doing, Matt? How you doing, John? This is Dirk Funk. Happy to talk to you guys. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, how can you prove that it's impossible that there is no God? Also, I, I want to know, do you recognize sure. that that's not Matt or, or uh, either Matt or, or my position that there is no what, God? What is neither like, Matt in, or your? Oh, so well, you, the, the, uh, I'm not I, trying to I speak for Matt on that, that actually. I thought you. No, no. So, so just, just to clarify here so that we start off on a good foot, uh, I'm what you would call an agnostic atheist. I don't believe in a God, uh, but I don't know whether or not one exists. So if you can prove that it's impossible for no God to exist, I would be interested in hearing that. So, um, uh, you know, but as long as you, you're not thinking that I'm, I'm a Gnostic atheist where, where I think that either God is, is definitely absolutely not real. Um, I leave myself open to the possibility of it, even if it's a very slim chance that it could exist. Um, so yeah, as long as we're understanding in that, I think we can have a good conversation. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, actually, I, I will want to ask you a question on that. So you say you're an agnostic atheist. Why do, why do you simply say, or why do you not simply say you're agnostic? Why do you add the word atheist? To uh, okay, right. What you say I, feel, I, feel like, I feel like I explained that. So I'm, ag I'm, I'm an agnostic because I don't know whether or not a God exists. But as far as my beliefs go, so I do not believe in God. I do not, I do not believe in one. I do not believe in a God. What would you, so, so knowing my position now, how would you label me? Would you just label yeah. me a pure agnostic? Because that doesn't seem to really cover yeah. exactly what I said, because I said that I don't believe in one. I don't believe a God exists, but I don't know well, whether you don't or not one does. One because you don't know. Thus no, agnostic. that's not what I said. No, that's not what I said. It's not what I fucking said. Can you somehow steel man what I actually said? Yeah, you're saying you're not making the claim that there is no God, but you don't believe in one. Right. It, and 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 additionally, separate and no, that's correct. But additionally, you're just missing a little bit there. I don't know if one uh, exists or not. Right. That's that's what I said prior. Right. You, you don't no, know. Well, I asked you. No, no, no. no I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dirk. I, this up this up feels. No, no, no. Dirk, Dirk, Dirk. Jesus fucking Christ. I'm muting you real, real quick. Um, so I tried to set this up. When I asked you for the steel man, I, I, I asked you to steel man it for me. And you said that, you know, that the atheist part, like I don't believe in a God. Right. And you left off the agnostic part, meaning that. I don't know whether or not one exists or not. So maybe we can, maybe we can start. Let's try starting this all over again. Hi, I'm John. This is Matt. We are, uh, we, we don't believe in a God and, and we don't know whether or not one exists. You say that you can prove that there being no God is impossible. So welcome Dirk. Let's try this again. Sure. How you doing, John? How you doing, Matt? It's nice to talk to some agnostics. I think it's irrational to believe that the human species came to be just by pure randomness or by mutation. I do right. believe uh, okay, that okay. evolution so this is, is true. So, right, 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 right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're talking about the impossibility of God, but you're wanting to pivot now immediately uh, in the one sentence to an evolution claim, you can be a theistic evolutionist. Right. You can believe that God exists and that God guided yep. evolution in some kind of way and everything like that. So that seems to be like a non issue for the question of whether or not God exists. So if you want to make the case that God guided evolution, that would be an unfalsifiable claim. There's no way that we can test that or know that or anything like that. So it seems like a, a pretty, uh, a, a pointless conversation to have. Well, Would you like to have an actual beneficial conversation? Well, if you stop interrupting me, maybe you'll understand that I do believe that God guided evolution, right? 
And I believe that the very fact that you yourself are here would be completely impossible without some sort of higher beat being guiding. Uh, how did so? So, so let me let me ask that you Dirt, were born. Dirt, 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 How how do you know that God guided evolution? Well, that that's why I'm calling in to speak about that. Maybe you could stop interrupting, and maybe I could give an argument. So Do you know what a gift develop is, Dirk? Dirk, 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 fuck. Um, do you, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you, do you know what a gish gallop is and do you, can you see the benefits in going one claim at a time rather than, you know, treating this as if it's a debate where you have a five minute opening and then I have a five minute rebuttal. Like we're trying to have a conversation here and there's no way for me to address every single claim that you could put into a two minute like opening thing. Right. So let's please go one topic at a time. I asked you, Right. That uh, 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 how do you know that God guided evolution? And I, I want you to come back. Uh, I know that I asked you about gish galloping, but that's really uh, that, that that's pointless to ask right now. But what I want to know is, how do you know that God guided evolution? And I would really love to hear an answer to that. Wait, sorry. You need the argument. No, no, uh, sorry, it, it it failed to unmute you for a second. So could you could you restart? Okay. Well, yeah, I I don't think you actually care to hear the argument being that you keep interrupting every five seconds. But anyways, the argument is that it's impossibly, uh, probable probabilistically wise, it's impossible for you to actually exist, being that every single can, can micro give me that decision math? that was made. Well, I mean, it's not math that we could really even comprehend, but if I'm sorry, I'm sorry, no, 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 listen, Dirk, 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 you're, you're, you're totally, you're totally mucking this up here. No, but, but I'm just pointing it out here. Okay. Where you're not making sense. Maybe you can refactor what you're saying here. You're saying that it's statistically and probabilistically well, impossible. How about, that? How about you listen? To Shut the fuck up. Who's the host, Dirk? Who's the fucking host? Who's the host? You're the host. I mean, you're running a weird show okay. here where you don't let the guest speak at all, but go ahead. No, no, no. I'm trying Dirk, to let you speak. You're a fucking liar. <laughs> We're happy. <laughs> liar. Happy I didn't even make a claim. I couldn't even get a You, sentence you literally just made a claim, dipshit, that we're only interrupting and that we well, don't care about any of it. Every five seconds. You don't yes, even know because what I you're said. an annoying fucking prick who will not answer the question okay, and ahead. wants to just whine like ahead. a little fucking bitch that you got fucking muted when you wouldn't answer the question. So I'm done, done, done with you whining. John's going to talk to you. Just fucking answer the question and having a conversation because until you do, it looks like you are nothing but a dishonest fucking troll trying to stir us up. Congratulations, you've succeeded. Your claim, I'm sorry, is that it, your proof that God exists is that it is impossible for God to not exist because you are convinced that evolution cannot happen without a God intervening. Curiously, the bulk of scientists don't seem to have that agreement that a god is required for evolution. So, without whining or talking about getting muted, we're going to ask you again, what is your evidence yeah. that it is impossible for evolution to occur without a god intervening? Not, hey, you believe it. What is the reason that you are convinced that evolution cannot happen without a god intervening? Go. Am I unmuted? Can I speak now? I fucking knew it. Goodbye, Dirk. You don't get to talk ever again. I literally, you, you guys are so predictable. <laughs> for, the, for the people who end up watching this in clip form, this happens all the time. These people aren't real. They're not sincere. Dirk is not a sincere defender or believer of God. Dirk doesn't give a shit about anything other than riling us up and stirring us up. People who genuinely want to have the conversation, First of all, somebody like Alicia will stick through it even when things are, are, are getting heated. Um, 
But also, people who are genuinely having the conversation, if, if, for example, somebody had a good understanding of that particular argument, something that I've dealt with for 20 years, which is that, hey, we can prove X via reductio ad absurdum, by the, via the impossibility of the contrary. We assume that X is true in order to show that it leads to a contradiction, which shows that X isn't true. Vice versa, you can assume that X is not true, and that leads to a contradiction demonstrating that it is true. And so some people want to argue that the justification for believing that a God exists is that it is impossible for evolution by means of natural selection to produce the genetic diversity that we experience without the intervention of a God. I don't need you for this, Dirk. I'll do this part. <laughs> Dirk's position that it's impossible is based on the extraordinary unlikelihood of us resulting from randomness. The problem is, Evolution by means of natural selection isn't random and doesn't rely on randomness. Mutations occur randomly. Sometimes mutations occur non-randomly as a result of specific contributing factors that are identifiable. But the process of selection is not random. You've seen maybe those ball sorters to sort or money sorters to sort coins by different size. You start off with a series of big holes that let everything do it through except for half dollars. And then you go to slightly smaller holes that let everything through except for quarters. And you keep going down and down and down until you get a dime. The coins are just shuffling around. They're not making any decision. The thing is shaking and moving them. There's no thought involved other than in the creation of the holes. That's something we, def we created in order to sort this. Does that mean that that sort of sorting mechanism always needs an intelligent creator? No, that would be a fallacious argument from analogy. The mere fact that an intelligence can do something doesn't mean an intelligence is required to do something. When you sort through the coins, if you were to compare that to nature, a mother gives birth to a handful of offspring. Some of those are not going to make it. I keep and breed reptiles. Reptiles often lay many eggs. Some of them, by the way, don't lay eggs. That's the difference between boas and, and pythons, for example. But their strategy is to produce a lot of offspring, a lot of offspring, because they realize not all of those offspring are going to make it. Some of them are going to get eaten by predators. Some of them are going to be unhealthy. Some of them are going to fail to thrive. Some of them are never going to eat. I have nine brand new baby carpet pythons in the other room. Uh, only three of them have eaten, despite the fact that they're now about three weeks out of the egg, but they have now all shed out. And we're optimistic, and we will be hand-feeding and nurturing them. If they had just been left out in the wild, maybe only one or two or three of them might survive to grow up to reproduce. That's what natural selection is. It is not a decision, I want that one and that one and that one to live. It is, here's the, here's the world you're in. Which of you can make it? This is why the early versions of Darwinistic evolution were often described as survival of the fittest. But humans are stupid. And we take, took fittest to mean, oh, we, whoever's the beefiest. No, it means whichever creatures can best survive in this environment, those are the fittest for that environment. A fish isn't fit for my living room, and I'm not fit for the bottom of the ocean. Fitness is defined by the criteria. When we look at the human genome, we can see exactly, in some cases, where we are related to other living things on the planet and to what extent. We're so good at it, we've mapped it all out. Do we know all of it? No. Nope. But there's no need for any god or any person to intervene. It's not impossible that that would change things. For example, we know natural selection is different from directed selection where we breed dogs specifically to get smaller dogs, bigger dogs, smut, flat faced dogs, dogs that can't breed or hold them, breathe or hold themselves up. I breed snakes. We put together different genes to produce different looking snakes. That's the difference between artificial selection, which I called directed a moment ago, and natural selection. But the criteria is not God directed or person directed necessarily. Just seeing that X is the outcome doesn't tell you how X is the outcome. And the fact that you might think it's unlikely because look at all the possible things that could have happened, it led to this. 
no matter how unlikely it is, it absolutely happened. And unless you can show that it is impossible for it to happen without a God, which is exactly what the caller would like to have done or pretended that they would have liked to have done, you cannot justify your, your, a conclusion that it required a God. But Dirk, Dirk's not honest. Dirk doesn't know the rest of the argument. Dirk, Dirk read part of an argument and decided he would sit here and obfuscate and dance around. Um, by the way, I don't know enough about evolution. I don't know enough about biology. And I'm pretty sure that John's not a big old expert on either one of them. We, we have a passable understanding, which is still an order of magnitude greater than Dirk's or any of the other people who are denying the reality of science. But you can call in and watch, for example, our show on Monday night, which is Skeptalk, where frequently we have biologists, zoologists, um, uh, physicists, uh, bunches of science experts here to specifically do a better job of explaining how and why we know what we know and how you, I don't even know how you would begin to explain it's impossible for this to happen without intelligence. In order to reach that conclusion, you would have to know what is possible to happen with and without intelligent guidance. How did you determine that? Oh, well, it's just really unlikely. That is not in any way evidence for a God, because here's the thing. Here's the thing, Dirk, get ready. I'm going to blow your fucking mind. How likely is it that a God directed evolution? Can you quantify that? Can you approximate it? How likely is it that nothing intelligent directed evolution? Can you quantify it? Can you approximate it? You would need to be able to quantify or approximate both of those in order to be able to do a comparison to determine which one is more likely. But you can't even demonstrate that it's possible for a God to exist. You can't even demonstrate that it's possible for a God to intervene in evolution. And the experts on evolution and the scientific facts show that change occurs without any apparent source. And the select selection criteria frequently changes, including populations in isolation. There is no need. I can't prove that when I blow my nose, God isn't in there grabbing the boogers and pushing them directly into it, and that my airflow is just a habit of mine. I can't prove that. Is there any reason to think that, that God's in there picking my boogers for me and hand placing them in the napkin? And when he's done, does God do, look at me and tell me a joke like, you might think that's a booger, but it's not. Anyway. That's a long way to go to get to a joke, but I got to lighten the mood a little bit. And like a subscriber, Jimmy will have to go on a polyamorous dating show to win some prize money. Wait, I want to do that. So also hit like and subscribe and then go to patreon.com slash call the line. I was trying to make you laugh and ruin the take. That's why that silly face earlier. Uh, if I was on a polyamorous dating show, I would just choose everybody. Except Frederick. Leave a comment.